Hey guys, this is Sarah here, and I'm here with Rob, and we're taking a look at some of the gaming terrain he's made so far, and he's going to give you a quick update on some stuff we found today. Yeah, so I was at the uh, Lumber Mart there a couple days ago, and I put in an order for some masonite to be uh, cut up into one foot square pieces like this, and uh, the sheet of masonite was two foot by four foot, so it made uh, eight pieces of uh, roughly a foot square and I wanted to use these so I could lay out an entire room of a dungeon and bring it on the table all at once or set up a dungeon with a, with a full square like that and so it would save time I wouldn't be building the, the room one uh, tile at a time and what I did was bought a roll of this um, drawer liner it's like a rubberized sheet that comes in a roll that's fairly thin you can cut it with a the uh, box cutter, and by laying it down and gluing it down to the to the masonite, it basically makes a, a mat that is non-stick for your tiles. So ordinarily, you'd have a piece of tile like that, and because it's got the the foam board underneath, you could set things up, but it's fairly fairly slippery. Anyone so reaching for a uh, handful of chips from the bowl is going right. to knock that right out of the way. Yeah, uh, causing chaos. So you lay this stuff down, and in fact what I do is glue it down, and it makes for a little bit of a, a tighter stick. Which comes, it, it's not sticky or anything, it just gives a little bit of uh, extra... Grip, a little more friction. Extra grip, yeah. So my I, with my uh, sheet of masonite I had um, eight sheets and so I glued down, I think the roll I had was enough to make uh, 10 sheets, so I have some left over. And where did you get that, Walmart, or you can get it anywhere, I guess? The rolls were, the roll of the drawer liner was bought at Walmart, yep, and this stuff was, uh, the masonite was home hardware. So what you can do then is when you're preparing to lay out your dungeon, you can um, set things up on these, on these sheets. So here we have, this is actually the, the box that comes with the Wilderness Master Kit dungeon tiles. And so we've got an outdoor scene here. And this tile is one of the accessory tiles that comes with it. And this is an entrance to a dungeon. And again, with just a piece of this drawer liner, you can, you can set it down and it, it's essentially on there. It's not going to move without, much, uh, without a lot of you know, um, effort. Otherwise, it's going to be set down on the, on the table, and again, it just slides all over the place. So this is a, a good way of of temporarily fixing your your tiles to your to your piece. So from there, in this sheet, for example, this is just the box with a set of stairs going down, and then a, a quick little uh, 15 meter, five foot wide um, walkway. And let's throw a little bit of terrain on here to give it some. Give it a corner. What I really like about um, some of these cardboard pieces is that they do come apart really easily. So once you put them together, they're not there forever. You can um, easily store them, and um, it's a lot easier than some of the plaster terrain that you make. Yeah, and that, that there's two other Wizards of the Coast. This is a product by Wizards of the Coast. Um, there's two others that have... Um, three-dimensional pieces in it, like uh, stairways and uh, platforms and bridges and things. So I went out and bought those specifically because they had these 3D elements in them, which are kind of neat. And that was before I even got into the plaster terrain. Um, just to let you know, I, I used a watered-down bit of white glue. I just have this little dropper bottle here and got this at Michael's and uh, watered down some regular white glue and I just ran it over and, and spread it out with a, with a paintbrush and um, let, it, let it sit and dry. I'm not sure how long it'll last before this you know, starts to peel up on the corners or anything. I might use um, some hot glue or, or a spray adhesive or something later on down the road if I, if I need to. But yeah, so this tile is you know, fairly straightforward just for demonstration purposes. You get this little corner here in the dungeon and then we've got a, a naive bunch of affordable adventurers that decided to take up a contract maybe to clean out a dungeon or something. And Poor they souls don't know what they're in <laughs> for. <laughs> so facing them in this tile is a, is a long hallway and there's a you know, swarm of rats that they've got to overcome at the end there. And this breaks into another room. These are uh, some dungeon dwelling uh, edder caps I think that 
the group will have to get through if they want to perhaps investigate the supplies that are over in this corner here. There might be some treasure there. And then we've got the long dead occupant of this little bedchamber. Some kind of specter or skeleton. It's an awfully cozy looking bed he has there. That's nice, eh? That's yeah. nice. That's a big, big duvet. And then I've got some pieces that I haven't quite finished yet. Some wall pieces and a set of stairs. I'm going to finish those soon. But um, say you've set this up and you've got you know, this set of stairs and you know you don't want to be revealing everything necessarily to your players all at once. So Is it a stairway to nowhere? <laughs> right, so to add another element of uh, the third dimension to the board, I went out to Home Depot and I was looking for something that would act as a razor to add uh, like a level to the, to the game. And you can buy these little... Um, there's a whole bunch of variety of different pieces of pipe, and these are little like little uh, PVC pipe connectors, and they they're in a bin, and you can buy them for fifty odd cents. I think fifty five cents is what they were each. How tall are they? Did you say that already? I think they're like the inch and a half. But as it works out, they're the perfect height for the set of stairs that we have here. So if you've got your dungeon set up off to one side, you prepared your layout, you can then just go and grab your next room and build your dungeon as, as you go. And you can set things dun, up. Dun, dun, dun. Set up the big room so you you know you, things aren't going to be um, spoiled in advance. So you can see um, you can surprise your players with the layout of a dungeon. And then if you don't want to have the monsters there, you can sort of populate the monsters if you don't want, if you want to wait till you know the guy is up here looking in through the door of the of the stair well or the, the next room there you can finally be able to give report down to the magic user you know gosh there's some god awful creatures in there right <laughs> gosh <laughs> so we've got the the drow it's a drow cleric or something he's uh, sitting behind this altar and these these may be statues they might not be Here's his sort of uh, sergeant at arms, his his muscle, some kind of psychic character, and then some conjured uh, bits of badness that are uh, ready to tear a strip off. Yikes! Right. So yeah, these are just things that um, I think will add to the game table, uh, especially when you're looking to surprise your players. You want to you know slap down a nice bit of dungeon, or uh, you know have things not immediately revealed to your players. And fairly inexpensive. The um, the two by four piece of masonite was less than eight dollars. Um, the roll of drawer liner a couple bucks. And um, yeah, that's it. See you soon.